Good afternoon, saints of God. Or good evening, elder. <laughs> good evening, good evening. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? The psalmist tells us that in his presence there is fullness of joy. But he didn't stop there. He continued to say that at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Perhaps you've been having a stressful week so far. Perhaps you've been having a trying time. This evening, as we pause from a week of labor, as we pause from the normalcy of life, we pause to present ourselves before a loving Lord, a loving Jesus, in whose presence there is fullness of joy, in whose presence there are pleasures forevermore. But the psalmist opens that particular verse by saying, you make known to me the path of life. You make known to me the path of life. If it is your desire this evening that God makes known to you the path of life, if it is your desire this evening that you experience this joy that surpasses all understanding, then I invite you to pray with me as we begin our service, acknowledging our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you once again in this fashion, quite familiar to us, but on a different day, one filled with trials and tribulations. We come before you in a familiar fashion, but on a different day, one filled with troubles, situations unbearable. But yet, O oh Lord, we come knowing that we serve a mighty God and a mighty Savior. We come knowing that in your presence, O oh Lord, there is fullness of joy, and that your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And so, O oh Lord, despite our challenges in this world, we come seeking a peace that surpasses all understanding. We come seeking comfort. We come seeking the man Christ Jesus. And so, oh Lord, if you will come divinely close to us even now, may we humble ourselves in your presence. And may we lift up a praise in this place. May Jesus Christ be lifted up. And may all glory be to his name. These mercies we ask in Jesus' name. Let the church of God say amen, amen and amen. amen. We do not have any birthdays today. And so at this point in time, we will move into our song service by the Blair family. Amen. Let's bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We'll be singing a song, Love Lifted Me. Yes, indeed, um, a very potent one for this first service. Surprise is not in the hymnal, so we are going to be using our cell phones to help us with the words. And we will sing all three stanzas. I was sinking 
deep in sin, far from thy peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now sing is I must tell Jesus yeah. 485 from the hymnal I must tell Jesus all my trials I cannot bear these burdens alone amen I must tell Jesus
troubles. He is a kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask him, he will deliver. Make all troubles quickly and end. How must tell Jesus? How must tell Jesus? I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. Oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus, and he will first song they sang it's ironic that they sang that song love lifted me and I say that because just earlier today just earlier today I was talking with a co-worker and I said you know something came to my remembrance I said you know it would have been 12 years since I got the news from the doctor, go home and settle your business. 12 years. And so that song, Love Lifted Me, meant something to, to, to me in that moment. And so I pray that each one of us can remember something right now, tonight, of how love lifted you. So as you can see on the board, on the television there, okay, I'm feeling little television, what they call it now? <laughs> you don't call it television anymore, monitors or something. <laughs> it's testimony time. And so while I'm speaking, if you have a testimony, you just raise your hand and I'll make sure and get the mic to you, because I know you have something to thank God about. I see one hand already. Thank you, old boy. Well, I finished the conflict of the ages series. Amen. Um, I had to read the last chapter of the great of the great controversy three times. It's amazing. Um, how it's going to end, and it gave me encouragement. I feel better now. Um, I'm starting to testimony this now, testimony to church volume one, but um, I have been blessed. So if you get the opportunity to read The Great Controversy or The Conflict of the Ages series, get started. It's, it's, it's an eye-opener. Mm. It's a blessing. Amen. Amen. I see Brother Andre right down the back there. Brother Gerald. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I got some good doctor's reports between last week and this week. Amen. I have been, since last year, I've been suffering a lot. But uh, 
My cardiologist says everything is good. Amen. Everything is the way it's supposed to be. And then I have my blood work done to check for this blood clot I'm, I'm carrying. And this is the second time that I've had the test and the numbers are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So that means it's stabilizing. Amen. You know, I thank God for him working in me and with me to get me sorted out. God Amen. Amen. Uh, yes, good evening. <clears throat> you said um, earlier love lifted me. So for me, it's uh, made me think about my wife just had an operation on her shoulder, had her shoulder replaced. And God brought her through that tremendously yeah. well. Um, you know, she's healing up, you know, quick, even faster than, than, than uh, you know, it's only been two weeks, but, mm. you know, she's, she's healing up super fast. So, you know, the Lord has got in our hand. So, as I said, you know, thank you. Thank the Lord for that. You know, the testimony I hear of his goodness and his grace. He goes through a lot of pain before. Now, like, like Brother Gerald just said, everything's speedy and, 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 and going forward. Love lifted me. Amen. Amen. I'm glad you. I'm glad you went there because, uh, uh, like you, my wife had an operation just today, and uh, she's back home now, uh, recovering, healing pretty good. So I want to praise God for for blessing my wife and getting her through this time safely, and bringing her back home. Because Lord knows I wouldn't have a clue what to do without my wife. <laughs> Amen. So let's go right ahead. Amen. Good evening, church. Um, I'm always grateful. Any day above the ground mm. is an awesome day for me. So, but I'm just thankful that um, our children were in a car accident um, the 5th of April and the 13th of April. And I'm still praising God because it could have been a different call, but he kept them. And seeing that our son wasn't wearing his seat belt and got thrown out of the driver's seat to the passenger seat. Mm -hmm. And his car deemed total, God took care of him. And I'm Amen. so grateful that God keeps blessing each and every one of us, even when we're not doing exactly what he wants us to do. He's still looking out for us even before we can call on him. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful to him for that. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? There we go. We have hands. Look at that. See, I, that before I speak, I'm going to say yes to anyone else. I know somebody else wants to thank God. Uh, bless the Lord. Um, it's just a, a quick one. I feel the same as uh, Mrs. Seed. I, I feel like just being here and being alive is more than enough to thank God for. Mm -hmm. You know, we have been so unfaithful. But through it all, he's still faithful to us, giving us life so much that we, we really don't deserve. And every day I think about my life and how God has been good to me. Yes, sir. And I just want to say thank, thank to God, thanks to him, you know, thank to him for, 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 for being there for me, for saving me, for keeping and preserving my life, and also for blessing me with a beautiful wife. Amen. <laughs> Amen. She has been a tower of strength mm. many times. And um, just pray for us. You know, life is really a journey, and we intend to make it over on the other side. Amen. In Jesus' name. Beautiful. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. Sister Jokes, I think. And uh, yeah. I am so doubly thankful to God for the rain. You know, most mm. comedians thank God for the rain because yes. it puts water in the tank and you know it saves your money and yeah. it's precious but i doubly thank him for the rain because you may not know it i enrolled in the grow eat save program which is about gardening and growing mm. your own food and so on and since being in that course man when i see that rain and it's watering our crops mm. i say thank you jesus but the miracle of it all, this morning when it was raining and the thunder was coming down, I was saying, thank you, Lord, for the seed that was planted. And then I began to think about that seed. I don't know how many of you plant, but a seed is no, some seeds are no bigger 
than a pinhead. As a matter of fact, smaller than a pinhead. Mm. But in that one seed is the miracle of life. Mm. In that one tiny insy bitsy seed is the fruit or the vegetable that has everything in it. And a lot of times we look around for miracles, but it's miracles in that yes. seed. Mm -hmm. And then it made me think of the hymn. So this morning when I'm doing my, uh, my worship, I think of that hymn, the wonder of it all. Mm. And I think about there's the wonder of springtime and harvest, because you know I got some tomatoes on the plant, so I'm looking forward to that harvest. But it says there's the wonder of the springtime and harvest, the sky, the stars, the sun, but the wonder of wonders that thrills, that thrills my soul is the wonder that's only begun Oh, the wonder of it all, the wonder of it all, just to think that God loves me. Mm. I was just so thrilled, like that song just welled up, and I sang it all day, the wonder of it all, yes. that Jesus, through God, loves me. Mm. And so I thank God every day for the miracles that he shows me as I'm planting and as I'm in the garden. And if you're looking for a miracle, just start gardening Amen. and you'll see the miracle that God has for us. But the greatest miracle is his love for us. Amen. And I thank God. Amen. We really appreciate all the testimonies. And, you know, we're, we're, we're Sister Jukes just left off. Uh, if we had more time, <laughs> if we had more time, we could stay right there. The miracle of life. What kind of God do we serve who has life in himself and can take life itself and place it? And so, I, I'm just saying, I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna stop there, our time is up. But God bless you all, Pre prepare. I, I'm gonna do what Elder Mark usually does. Pre -pre prepare your testimonies for next week. I won't be on next week, but whoever's standing here next week, you're gonna be ready to give your testimony for, amen? Amen, amen. amen. God bless you. As we prepare our hearts for prayer, meditate on the words of this song with me. Turn, turn. 
good evening, everyone. I want to thank Sister Blair for that beautiful rendition. But I want to switch gears just a minute. There's a song by Kurt Carr, and it says, I almost let go. No, we're not singing. I felt like I just couldn't take life anymore. My problems had me bound. Depression weighed me down. But God held me close so I wouldn't let go. God's mercy, Brother Blair, kept me so I wouldn't let go. I almost gave up. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough, but couldn't see it. You see, the devil really had me, but Jesus came and grabbed me, and he held me close, so I would not, so I wouldn't let go. God's mercy kept me, so I wouldn't let go. He goes on to say, so I'm here today because God kept me. I'm alive. Your son and daughter, they are alive today because God kept them, Sister Steve. Oh, he kept me. God kept me. He kept me so I wouldn't let go. We've arrived at this time now in our service where we can lay our petitions at the altar, giving thanks to God for his grace and mercy for bringing you through, Gerald. Andre, for bringing your wife through. God kept her so she wouldn't let go. And whilst on the outside, things are crazy. But God kept us, saints. See, you can't win a race. You either do or you don't. You can't win a championship. You either do or you don't. The songwriter says, I almost let go, but God kept me so I wouldn't let go. The race that we're in, this journey, this life that we're in, it's going to get rough. It's going to get hard. But God kept, keeps us so we won't let go. If we put our trust in him, we won't, he won't let us go. So I'm going to invite us now as we have many, many petitions and the name of Brother Ross Ford comes to mind. And I'm sure there's many others. Sister Henry is in the hospital. Just her. Thank you very much. But there are so many problems and difficulties, difficulties that we face. But God keeps us. So now I'm going to ask, if, invite us, if we could come together in twos and threes and petition to God your concerns, your challenges. And at the end, I would close in a word of prayer. So you could get together now and petition the throne room for yourselves because we can come boldly before the throne of grace. We don't need anyone to intercede on our behalf. And just remember, God is keeping you right now.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us the opportunity to come before you and to petition our pleas and our concerns that we have for one another and for ourselves. Lord, I thank you for being with us thus far and being with uh, Sister Henry as she is now home. Continue to be with Brother Russ Ford and his family. Be with this church. I ask that you continue to uh, provide your spirit to the leadership of this church, from the church board right on down to the Sabbath school teacher. Be with Pastor Steed as he and his family as they lead, our, lead out in our church, Lord. And as he brings forth your message this evening, I pray that the words are spoken will be from on high, that you would hide him in the cross and that only you will be seen. Above all, Father, I pray that you would save us from uh, this world of sin. And when you come back your second time, you will claim us as your own. And that we'll be able to stand on the sea of glass and enjoy the fruits of your labor, Lord. Help us to be faithful unto the very end. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, church. Good evening. Our scripture reading this evening is taken from Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 and 25. Proverbs 11, verses 24 and 25. The Bible says, There is that scattereth, and yet increaseth, and there is that withholdeth more than is meet but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Let us, continue, let us consider these words as we prepare our hearts for this spoken word. sing a song called Marvelous Grace. Does anybody think that grace is marvelous? What does it do? What, what has grace done for you? Pardon? Second chance? Everything, all of, all of it. <laughs> um, it can exceed our sin and our guilt. Amen? Grace it can pardon and cleanse within. Don't, don't you need cleansing today? I need cleansing. Grace, God's grace, and it's greater than all of our sin. Not every single last one of your sins, grace is greater than that. So sing along with me. I'm gonna try to sing it in a 
jubilant style because this is a jubilant song. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Sing it with me. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Sin and despair like the sea waves cold Threaten the soul with infinite loss Grace that is greater, yes, grace untold Points to the refuge, the mighty cross Grace, grace, God's grace Grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that is greater than all our sin. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace. Freely bestowed on all who believe. You that are longing to see his face, will you this moment his grace receive? Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace greater sing it again grace grace sing it grace grace god's grace grace that will pardon and cleanse within grace grace god's grace grace that is greater than all our sin church of the living God say amen this evening come on somebody ought to praise the Lord for grace God's grace were it not for grace uh, somebody knows that it's because of his grace and his mercy that you are here today what a privilege it is to speak a word on behalf of the Lord today I, I heard my elder up here it sounded like he was about to sing you know I looked on the screen and I saw that Deacon Blair was supposed to sing, you know. I heard Sister Jukes sitting on the second row talking about wonderful words of life. I was very afraid that she might sing. But we are in God's house today because we have come to worship him in spirit and in truth. Can the church say amen? What a blessed time it is. Why don't you pray with me, spirit of the living God, speak to our hearts tonight, we pray. In Jesus' name, let everyone say amen. Come on, somebody say amen again. I think I'm in control of this, so I'm going to go ahead and click us through. Come on now, we got a new text on the screen, a new text for tonight. Keep playing for me, sis, if you will. We got a new text on the screen. Uh, Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Uh, Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. I don't know if you guys know that text. It's a new one. It's, I don't expect you to know it tonight. The other three I expect you to know. But come on, let's take a look at Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Which the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate, what everybody? Day and night. 
and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. What a word. Come on now. Come on now. This next one you should know. Job chapter 19, 25 and verse 26. It says what? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. I thought somebody would say something. They didn't say anything. For I know uh, that my Redeemer liveth, uh, and that he shall stand uh, at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms uh, destroy this body, yet in my flesh uh, shall I see God. Uh, somebody ought to say amen today, man. Come on, Job 13, verse 15 the Bible says, though he slay me, uh, yet will I trust him. Uh, but I know, uh, come on now, but I will remain, what, maintain my own ways uh, before him. And then Job chapter 1 and verse 21, the Bible says uh, that naked uh, came I out of my mother's womb, uh, and naked shall I return. Uh, the Lord giveth, uh, and the Lord taketh away. Somebody ought to say bless it tonight. Uh, come on, somebody ought to shout bless it. Uh, Blessed be the name of the Lord. I don't know about you, but there's so much promises in Scripture that ought to excite us when we think about His goodness and all He's done for us. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah in this house. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Has He kept you? The preacher talked about God keeping you. Has He kept you? Has He watched over you? Has He provided for you? Has He sustained you? Has He redeemed you? Has he comforted you? Uh, has he made a way out of no way? Uh, if he has, uh, then you ought to make some noise in church. The Bible says the Lord is good. Uh, and the Bible says let the redeemed uh, of the Lord say so. Uh, let the redeemed say something. You ought not to be quiet when you come to church. You ought to come in here with a praise on your heart uh, because God is always good. There's never a day you walk in church and God hasn't been good. He's always good. Even when you're angry, he's good. Even when your kids get on your last nerve, he's still good. Even when your wife is in surgery, he's still good. Even when there's no food in the cupboard, but you ate before you came to church, he's still good. I don't care what you're going through tonight. You have much to celebrate because God is good and he's good all the time. And because of that, we ought to have a smile on our face. Oh, come on now. Some of you got an angry look on your face. Come on, look at your neighbor and just smile. I don't want you to say anything. Just smile at your neighbor. Give him a big smile. Tell him that it's good to be in God's house. Hey, listen, I don't have much time. I don't have much time. I don't have much time. They prayed a little too long, had testimonies a little too long, sang too much. You know what I'm saying? Taking my time. Now, the steward, they took my time. But it's all right. I'm going to say what I need to say. Here's what the Bible says. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 22. The Bible says a stingy man. This is the English Standard Version. A stingy man hastens after wealth and does not know that poverty will come upon him. Oh, I need you to understand today that if you insist on being selfish with God and with your neighbor, you will end up broke. Oh, come on, come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I don't want to be broke. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, though, is that if you're stingy with God and you're stingy with your neighbor, you're going to be broke. Lord help us. There are people, I guarantee you, even in this church, that can testify that they were stingy with God. And now they are in their latter years and they're broke. Huh? Made millions of dollars in their lifetime, but are broke. Because somebody in here understands that even if you make a lot of money, the only way you get to keep it is if God keeps you. Oh, Lord, help us. Uh, keep you from diseases. Uh, protect your house. Protect your car. Protect your children. Protect your family. The only way you're going to have a lot in the end uh, is if God protects 
Come on. Somebody in here knows it doesn't matter how much you make. Oh, Lord, help us. It's how well you use what you make. And I need you to understand there is no better usage for your funds but to first give back to God what belongs to him. Uh, it's all right. It's all right. I'll get there in just a second. I need to get into uh, this message here because I need you to understand the title of the sermon tonight is The Niggardly Christian. Lord help us. It's a text. Come on now. The niggardly Christian. Ah, oh, Lord help us. You know, when I, when, I, when, I, when I saw that word, you know when I first saw that word, it's a joke. In Ellen White's writings, she uses it a lot. She uses niggardly all the time. Niggardly, niggardly. Uh, I know. And I know, I know, I know. I get a little nervous in here. And people get a little petrified, a little, little, little cautious, you know, wondering if I had gone over the line. Listen, listen, I need you to understand. So for your sake, for your sake, I will bring clarity for you tonight. I need you to understand that a niggard, pronounced niggard, with a D on it, niggard, it's okay, you can say it, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Niggard, a little listen, is a stingy, or ungenerous, and some dictionaries use a mean. In other words, when this person gives, they give, if you would, from a mean spirit, from a grudging spirit, from an angry spirit. Come on now. Some of you live with some people that when you ask them for something, they give it to you with a grudging heart. Oh, Lord, help us. I wish I had a witness in this place. That, 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 that in essence, in essence, in essence, um, you're asking for money for simple things. And when they hand it over to you, they hand it over to you angrily. They, they can't even look you in the eye when they give it to you. They, they, it, it hurts their heart just to see it go from their hand to your hand. They won't even watch it. That's how angry they are. And I need you to understand today that God owns the cattle upon a thousand hills. Everything belongs to him. And when God asks you to give, the last thing he's looking for is a niggardly spirit when he has blessed you abundantly. God uh, is looking for a generous spirit. He wants people to give with a willful heart. He wants people to give uh, out of the abundance of their hearts. The truth of the matter is, uh, is that we have, uh, even in God's house, I need you to understand this, every need uh, that God's house could ever dream of, the funds are already in God's house. Lord, help us. It's in our pockets, and we are unwilling to give. And you know why we're unwilling to give? Because the first thing in our heads, I got to pay my own bills. I got to pay my own light bill. Bermuda's the most expensive country in the world to live. I got to put food on my own table. I got to make sure my kids' tuition is paid. I got to do this, and I got to do that. And I need you to understand that in essence, when you do this... You are saying definitively to God that I don't trust you uh, to provide for my every need. Every time you do that, every time you run into somebody and they are in need and you got the money in your pockets and you don't give it to them because uh, you're worried about your own stuff, God is saying to you, uh, that I cannot trust you, I can't give you what I want to give you because I can't even trust you with the little bit that I have already placed in your hands. Don't you know that when you bless others, hey listen, I, I, I'll tell you a true story. I had an I had a elder when I passed it in Memphis. This guy is, I don't, I've never seen a man or person give the way this guy gave. It didn't matter when you asked him. Sister Joseph, I'm telling you, it didn't matter when you asked him. It didn't matter who asked him. It didn't matter who came to church. If they asked him for something, he would get it for them right away. Somebody come to church, they're hungry, they ain't got no food. Man, he would leave church and go get them some food. Hey, take this home with you. That's how he was. Need some medicine? Come on, I'll take care of it. What else you need? Anything they needed, he would make sure that they had it. And the amazing thing to me... This guy always had a lot of money. It was the weirdest thing. The more he gave, the more God gave to him. The more he blessed others, the more promotions he got at work, the more bonuses he got at work, the more stuff. And I said, dude, I said, I, 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 to be honest with him one day, I said, man, listen, you know, I, I try to give. I try to help others. 
but I'm not as given as you. You got a better heart than me. I, I told him flat out, man. I said, what is it? He said, Pastor, I've been doing it for so long and I've watched God show up in so many different ways that I can't stop giving now. I understand. I can never outgive it. Does anybody in church know that God always gives you more than what you put in the offering plate? Oh, come on now. Now he has a million ways to bless you. Sometimes, sometimes the car repair that should have cost you $3,000 only cost you $300. You only put a thousand in the plate and he gave you back $2,700. The truth of the matter is he's so far ahead of you that you couldn't catch him if you wanted to. The truth of the matter is, is that God is always taking care of his people. I need you to understand, God has said to us, the only way you can show true gratitude for what I did on the cross is to help somebody else. Lord Jesus. That's the only way. That's the only way he's provided for you to show that you appreciate what he did on the cross. It's for you to help somebody else in need. You remember the days of the early church? Huh? How they collected offerings, sold their properties, everybody had. Nobody came church lacking. Lord help us. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Bermuda is so expensive, it's almost like we see it as a, a term of endearment to be selfish. Lord Jesus. That in essence, yeah, yeah we do. And if people come ask us, we tell them, go get their own. Go get your own stuff. I work for mine, go work for yours. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you imagine if Jesus told us that? Huh? Go get your own salvation. I, I, I work for mine. Oh, Lord, go get your own. But no, every single time you come, he forgives you and provides for you and sustains you and takes care of you regardless of how you have carried on. Hey, listen, I, I, I can't stay here too long. Here's the thing. I need you to understand. Here's what Ellen White says in Councils on Health. Some think it beneath their dignity to look after small things. I need you to understand. This is, this is what... This is what we're not talking about tonight. They think it the evidence of a narrow mind and a niggardly spirit. But small leaks have sunk many a ship. Nothing that would serve the purpose of any should be allowed to waste. So I need you to understand. When we talk about giving, we're not talking about being wasteful. Oh, Lord, help us. When I talk about being wasteful, come on, stay with me now. A lack of economy will surely bring debt upon our institutions. Although much money may be received, it will be lost in the little waste of every branch of the work. Economy is not stinginess. Huh? Some of you need to stop wasting stuff. Lord Jesus, it's okay. Some of you waste things at your own house. Oh, Lord, help us. Some of you don't like to eat leftovers. Lord Jesus, man. Huh? Eat the leftover once, twice. Oh, you know what? I'm tired of that, you know. And before you know it, it's growing mold and strange smells are coming out the fridge and you throw it away. Lord help us. You throw it in the garbage. You throw something that was once good that's now bad because of your negligence in the garbage. Lord help us. Come on now. I know I'm talking to some of you. Some of you need to go home now and clean up the fridge because there's a bunch of rotten food in your refrigerator. Food that was once good, uh, that's now bad, that you have to toss out. It's called waste. Huh? Got two or three meals in the refrigerator, but yet you're wondering where your next meal is coming from. Lord help us. I, I, I need you to understand that God does not endorse waste. He doesn't endorse that, right? But here's the thing. Clarity. What we are not talking about, we're not talking about economy, or are we talking about the racist word that niggardly can sometimes be confused with? No, we are talking about, in essence, understanding the importance of being liberal. Here's what she says. Shall ingratitude be cultivated and made manifest in our niggardly practices in giving to the cause of God? No, no. Let us surrender ourselves a living sacrifice and give our all to Jesus. It is his. We are what? His purchased what? Possession. Come on now. Those who are recipients of his grace 
who contemplate the cross of Calvary will not question concerning the proportion to be given, but will feel that the richest offering is all too meager or disproportionate to the great gift of the only begotten son of the infinite God. Can any of us give something that can equate to the price that Jesus paid? Through self-denial, the poorest will find ways of obtaining something to give back to God. God calls for everybody to give something, even if it, listen, listen, even if it requires a sacrifice. Ah, oh, Lord help us. Why is that? Because when he came to save us, he, in essence, gave up everything. Everything he gave up. And you need to understand uh, that there are direct blessings attached to your giving. And there are direct curses attached to your non-giving. I am a firm believer that somehow, some way, listen to me and listen to me good, because God owns everything. Somehow, some way, God always gets his money. Uh, I wish I had a witness in this place. Uh, somehow, some way, he will get his money. Oh, hold on a minute now. Some of you know every time you try to rob God, come on now, he gets it all back. In other words, because he can't trust you with it, he'll give that $2,000 to the mechanic. I wish I had a witness in this place. He can't trust you with it, he'll give that to the guy that all of a sudden has to come fix the hole in the roof. He, he, you want to do what you're supposed to do? Trust me. Somehow, some way, he went. Why? Because it's all his to begin with. Keep trying to rob him. It's like putting your money in a, in a bag of holes. Every single time you get paid, the whole check is gone. That's not God's will. That is one of two things that are happening. Either you're mismanaging your money or you're not being faithful to him. One of the two is going on. And you've got to turn that around because there's coming a day really, really soon when the debt collectors will call in the debts and many Christians will fall by the wayside entering into the time of trouble because they have not handled their funds efficiently. It's an amazing thing because if you would, I wish I had time, but if you would, I'll take just one minute to talk about 1 Samuel Chapter 25, it's an amazing story about a rich man named Nabal. This guy had it all. Oh, yes, he did. He was rich. I mean, he had everything that you could imagine. It was absolutely unreal. It's crazy because, in essence, he had a very beautiful wife named Abigail. And it's amazing because this is the, during the time when David was on the run from Saul. This is on the time when David is out there just trying to protect his own life. Saul is trying to kill him, sending army after army to take his life. And here's the thing. David hooks up with Nabal, whatever, and he, they get together. And here's the thing. What David does for him is he protects all of his sheep. He protects all of his goats. He protects his cattle because every night the thieves would come and try to steal. David made sure that none of his stuff was stolen. Now, in his payment for that was supposed to be some food uh, and nourishment for him and for his soldiers. David sends the soldiers down there to collect some food. And Nahor comes back and says, hey, look, man, who the world is David? I don't know that boy. I don't know that son of Jesse. Who the world is that? I don't know him. You know, as far as I know, he could be an escaped slave. That's why he talks about David. Uh, the greatest soldier, the greatest fighter in his ranks. He said, for all I know, he's just an escaped soldier. He needs to go back to his master and ask for some food. They come back and tell David that story. David takes two-thirds of his army with full intent of wiping Nadal and everybody out. Oh, yeah, he's going to talk about me like that? We're going to wipe him out and we're taking... Matter of fact, David uses strong language. We're going to kill everybody and everything. Not, nothing will be left. Not even he that David says. Not even the dude that pisseth against the wall. We're killing him too. We're coming to kill everybody. And it's amazing because the servant goes back 
and tells Abigail this guy's what? And Abigail quickly puts together a bunch of food, a bunch of cakes, a bunch of bread. She was a woman of wisdom, puts together a bunch of stuff, and she intercepts David on his way to do destruction. As a matter of fact, the Bible in the story is actually, it's amazing because David is still fussing when Abigail shows up. He's on his way. He can't shut up the whole way as he's going to wipe him up. He's still talking and talking and talking. You wait till I get my hands on him. And when she shows up, she says, hey, listen, don't do this. Don't do this. Here, first of all, here's plenty of food, and I'll make sure you have much more. She then apologizes for her husband. Listen, he never been in his right mind. He'll never be in his right mind. Listen, just go ahead, take this food. Number two, don't destroy your whole kingdom, because if you do this, this will, if you would, negate your authority or your right to take the kingship. So don't do this. In other words, in other words, because... Nadab was refusing to actually give them the bread. He was not making the payment he was supposed to make, which meant he should be killed. The problem was, it was not the place of David to do the killing. Oh, I need somebody in here to understand that vengeance uh, belongs to the Lord. Jesus says, vengeance uh, is mine. And so she convinces him, and David holds it off. Now, she has to go back and tell her husband what happened. She gets back. Nabal is drunk. The Bible says, read the story. First Samuel 25. Read it. And, and in essence, in essence, he's drunk. He's so drunk, she has to wait till the morning to tell him what she did. When she tells him in the morning, when he gets sober, you know, coming right off his hangover. When she tells him the story, the dude's heart immediately fails. And he's like a stiff for 10 days straight. And then, guess what? The Lord killed him, set him there for 10 days, and then killed him. Now, that ain't enough, man. David then invites the beautiful Abigail to come on over. <laughs> I was thinking, this woman is so wise and as beautiful as you are, you ought to be one of my wives. <laughs> and, and, and in that sense, uh, she agrees. Here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. These characters in the Bible are something else out of Anza Melinda. There is no resistance whatsoever from Abigail becoming his wife. None! She don't say, oh no, I don't think it's a good idea. No, 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 no. Immediately she goes and becomes his wife. What's my point? My point is, is that this man's stinginess caused him to lose all of his possessions, uh, to lose, if you would, his wife, and to lose his very own life. And I need you to understand that the same thing uh, will happen uh, to the Christian that insists on being stingy with God. God will take everything from you to remind you that everything belongs to him. Stop being stingy with God. Huh? Give of your best, the song says, to the master. Huh? Give of your best and watch him provide. I, listen, I know I got testimonies in here that can testify. I can testify on my own. Because I play Russian roulette with my gas tank all the time. It's a steed tendency. It's a tendency. I, I, I can't get over it. It's a tendency. The light comes on. The light comes on in my car, Jeffrey. It's a signal to me that in four days I should go to the gas station. Uh, I, 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 need, I need help. I, I need help, man. It's a, it's a steed thing, man. My, all my uncles do the same nonsense. Uh, I got some other people. Come on, come on. I got one witness down here. Somebody ought to testify with me that when that light comes on, you don't go. Come on, no other witnesses? <laughs> Uh, oh, there I go. Come on. Somebody ought to say amen. Some, somebody's testifying back there. But the truth of the matter is, is that I know uh, that God's going to keep me uh, because I am faithful to him in tithes and orphans. I don't worry about gas. I don't worry about stuff like that because God will provide. Now, is it stupid for me to rise three, four days? Yeah, you could probably argue that. I would argue contrary. I'd make sure all the gas is used in my tank. I, I, I'm not greedy. I wait till it's all gone. But the truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, is that God um, always provides. Always. He's never failed us yet. We failed him. Now we wonder why we don't have. Understand this. You have a fiduciary responsibility as a Christian to be faithful to God 
in tithes and offerings. And remember, the Bible says, you know, to love the Lord your God with all your heart. And the second commandment is likened unto it, to love your neighbor as yourself. I need us as Christians to stop ducking and dodging people that we know are in need. And let's start planning to bless them the next time we get paid. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. Let's put aside some money in our own budget to bless somebody else. Huh? It's only in those moments that you are partakers of the divine nature. Who Jesus gave and he gave, come on now, healed the sick made blind people see, made the lame to walk, left all of heaven, emptied out the whole house, just did everything. And when, as we often say, he had nothing left to give, he gave himself. He gave everything. And all he's asking you to do is find somebody tomorrow that's in need. Go pray about it tonight, because it takes strong faith. And let me tell you something. The last thing God wants is you to give it with a bad attitude. He'd rather you keep it. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. And here's the thing. I need you to understand this. And our lesson pointed this out, I think, in the last quarter. I need you to understand this. Some of you, before you start giving, need to spend ample time with God so he can fix your heart. So when you give, because, you know, some of you, you'll give. But as soon as you give it, you feel like you suffered a great loss. <laughs> oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? No, 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 no. You need to learn uh, that when you give, you have just opened the windows of heaven. Uh, there's blessings that are coming your way uh, because uh, you didn't just bless the Lord and his church, but you blessed one of the people that he's desperately trying to save. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples by the love you have. Want to show somebody you love them in church? Don't talk about their messed up suit. Go buy them a suit. I wish I had a witness in this place. Uh, uh, you want to you 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 bless somebody in church? Lord, help us. Stop inviting only the people to dinner that you like. <laughs> Lord, help us. <laughs> Invite the people that don't smell right, that wear the same clothes to church every single week. Uh, invite those people to lunch. Uh, tell them to come on over. Uh, in essence, uh, Jesus says, as you have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Amen. When you bless somebody or invite somebody over to your house that already has a lot of money, you have done absolutely nothing nothing yeah invite that person to your house that cannot give back to you what you give to them it's in that moment that you just join hands with Jesus to bless somebody else because the dude as the text says that person that is stingy and mean and just wants to make themselves rich, in the end, will end up broke. Broke. Nothing. Everything you work for, gone. Huh? The pension check you're getting is not big enough. After working for 40, 50 years, it's not big enough. Because you have robbed God and those whom he loves. Hey, listen, we're going to forgive the testimony people and the prayer people and the singers for keeping us a little late tonight. Let us pray tonight, Father in heaven. We thank you for your goodness and for your grace. We thank you for loving us and never withholding from us. We ask your blessing upon your people. May we not be as Ellen White calls niggardly people, people who are selfish and mean and, have, and walk around having our money in clenched fists because we don't want to share with somebody else. But may we be a people that have the heart of Jesus Christ and just want to bless somebody. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. <sighs>
Well, I, I, I dare say after a powerful word like that, we don't need a benediction. <laughs> but since we have to do the benediction, I just want to say may God completely rearrange how we think. Amen. Amen. God bless you and good night.